So today we're at the 2024 No Name Nationals, Sykeston, Missouri. Riley brought the Trans Am. Mike's got the Monte Carlo. Cut was back there hiding. Right now we're in line. Get the cars teched. I think they should pass. I don't know. They haven't seen under the hood of Riley's car though. He couldn't even put his sticker on straight. You got anything to say about that? Straighter than you are. He said he tried. Let's walk over there and look. Does it look like Riley tried? <laughs> Riley, let me try. You should have put it on the back of the glass. Would it look cooler? So anyway, let's get these cars through tech. And as you can see, we're here early. There's a uh, nobody here. It's a ghost town. So hopefully the people decide to show up here today. I've never been up this early for this event. It's weird. And I'm home. That's about all I filmed. Cause um, you know, oh, Chris is here with me. You know, it worked out perfectly that the first day we got there, I got, that now yeah see it yeah. anyway <coughs> now I'm home that's about all I filmed while we we're there because you know the first day there I got like really really sick like flu sick I probably had a fever I just didn't know because I was eating ibuprofen, ibuprofen like uh, skittles my head felt like it was a balloon you know like hearing is distorted sick or woozy nauseous um, the headache from sinus. I got a lot of shit in my chest now I'm trying to cough out. But anyway. As I told everybody, I was sick with the flu. I didn't back down from shit. I ran my car down the track anyway. I even ran this guy. I almost stepped on him a little bit too. Chris was like, man, you still can't beat me though. Dude, I almost had you. <laughs> anyway, my first uh, pass that I made with the car I think it was it was an okay pass. Actually, I ran Riley in the Trans Am, and I, I pulled right up to the strip, no burnout, nothing like that. And um, the light turned green, I got the car to hook really good. It picked up and it took off. And man, did I wax the Trans Am. I'll show you that footage here in a second. Roll your window up. I didn't even realize I was on a drag strip apparently because as soon as I like completely annihilated the Trans Am I just shut down and let off before I went across the finish line apparently I didn't realize I was on a racetrack <laughs> and seriously my, my brain wasn't there your brain was still in traffic the, uh, here's the, the first ticket I got them all laid out right here for you guys in order the first one I ended up coming across the line I ran a 9-1 and uh, at 71 miles an hour now this side of the ticket doesn't show you anything Riley ran. I really wish it did. Um, obviously, I could have ran a better time if I stayed into it. And um, in my second run, I ran Mike Hampton from Dent to Dreams. I didn't run that good. Um, my car lost a fuel pump that run. And I, I didn't know that the pump went bad. I almost thought I blew the engine on the car. Because first gear was so out of hand. No traction. I was pedaling the car trying to get it to go it was going down the track sideways and um when i finally did get traction i hit second gear and the car felt really weak and i'm like let me guess i suck the pan dry and I, I blow the motor that's why the car feels so weak right now but i know i have a trailer i can still get the car home i have another 455 hanging out back at the house <laughs> worst case scenario this thing's toast i can fix it later just kept my foot in it 
And then when I smashed third gear, the tack started to kind of come up and up and up slowly. And then it started going right back this way, back down. And I'm like, oh no, <laughs> this motor smoked. And then it shut off. So I roll across the finish line. Mike blows by me. I get to the end of the track and I just pull that little U-turn and pull off into the uh, grass. And then Mike just drives by me and leaves me. Thanks, Mike. Thanks for like abandoning me. That's what friends are for. <laughs> he got back. He's like, yeah, I told Riley. I don't know what happened. Marty's car's just parked out there on the side of the road. <laughs> I'm like, well, thanks. For thanks. <laughs> it turns out the fuel pump went bad mid-race. And that was a brand new Chinesium fuel pump. I got 1,600 miles out of that bad boy. Luckily, I had a spare fuel pump, an American pump, in the trunk. So we were back on the road in, I don't know, an hour. And um, that was the second run. It's a useful entertainment. 68 wheel 442, Look at the track, not fire. The third run, my dad decided he wanted to drive the car. And he raced me. And he raced Chris. <laughs> it was like you were going he backwards. He raced yeah, Chris. Quote unquote. Apparently he thought he was in his wagon where he could just drop the hammer. And um, my dad did drop the hammer in this thing and it did nothing but spin tires, spin tires. And his story is inconsistent, but according to what he said out of a conglomerate of stories. Well, I couldn't get it to hook, so then I shifted to second, and it still wouldn't hook, and then somehow he ended up in third, and then somehow he ended up in fourth. He ended up in fourth gear when this car should come across the finish line at 80 miles an hour at 5,000 RPMs. That's about where yeah. this car lives. Somehow he got to fourth gear, and he came across the line at 65 miles an hour and he ran an 1194. <laughs> he ran an 1194, which is slower than what this car ran when it was a factory two speed with points ignition in it, uh, factory 350 engine. Yeah, because you were running tens with that. Yeah. yeah. He ran this thing slower than it was in the stock form. It somehow made it to fourth gear, so I don't know what the clutch was feeling. I don't know. I just looked in the mirror and he was like still back at the back of the track. Mm. And I was like, what the hell? <laughs> so we'll insert that footage now. That was like, that's sad. <laughs> it's all awkward too, because the announcer's telling him to put the windows up, and he puts up the driver's window, and the back window only comes up halfway. I think he thought it was up the whole way. <laughs> <laughs> it looked like it was good when it, it took off. He didn't get much of a burn off, but... Yeah, I didn't. I couldn't see much. Still, it hooked hard. Yeah, it I'm gonna get, okay, I gotta, I gotta do it real quick. Hang on a second. The old guys. Need to roll your window up, please. That's stamina root for Chris. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, battle of the General Motors A body. Before the G body was the A body. Like the 68 Cutlass that you see here in the left lane, or the 71 Chevelle you see over there in the right lane. Same basic platform, but you got Chevy power in the right lane, you got Oldsmobile power in the left lane. And not even looking back. <laughs> and then I finally decided I was going to go back up and make a pass by myself with nobody next to me. And I thought I was going to run a really good time. And I only ran a 9.2, but I got 81 miles an hour out of it, which isn't bad. But what blows my mind is... I ran a 9.2 at 81 miles an hour, which is a... I had a better time when I raced Riley and I didn't even race the whole length of the track. Somehow that makes sense. It could have been just a 60 foot or... It could have been a lot of things. 
Now, the whole time, mind you, I'm sweating bullets. Is the car cold when you ran Riley? Had you just started it? No, no, no. I made sure the car was warmed up. I even warmed the transmission up. I was driving it around town and coming back. I wanted the whole car warmed up. And um, then my final race that I did, I ran the car four times. My dad did once. That's why there's five tickets. The last ticket is one where I raced Chris. And... um. It's the first time I've ever missed a gear in my entire life. Why are you looking at me like that? <laughs> because I'm looking at you in like disbelief for it's myself. Disbelief. I don't understand how you miss a gear. I've never missed a gear in any car I own. <coughs> well, stuff happens. It Just felt not like to you. <laughs> yeah, I'm perfect almost. Almost. I'm the most perfect er one that I know. <laughs> Just playing. <laughs> But still, it felt like it was in third, I think. I, I don't know what happened. I told Chris, the car did most of the driving when it was on the track because I I wasn't there. It was like, life was like a fever dream. I didn't even know how many passes I made with the car until I counted my tickets. But, um, it yeah. It would have been interesting to see what it would have been like if you wouldn't miss third. That's what I really yeah, wanted yeah. to see because when the light turned green, Chris got out of the hole quicker than I did. And then I got the car going, and I started pulling him in. I got right back up to him, and then I fell right back away. It was one, two, brrrr, whoa. If I had to guess, I might have spiked the tack up to about five grand. It was I immediately knew something. Yeah, I wasn't in gear, and I pulled out. Yeah. But this thing revs so quick. From the one video you'll see here, it looked like, dude, I pulled you right in. It, Mark thought I won. It, it was, you could see me catching right back up, and no, it looked good, though. I guess that's, that counts for half the battle. At least the race <laughs> looked good. <laughs> the Pontiac Le Mans, also the GTO of that year. And the Buick Skylark. These are basically the same car with different sheet metal and different engines. And we got to roll the window up. Power windows in a 68 gunless? Oh yeah! Now we're talking. time there and except for me I was miserable I didn't have a good time but now that I'm watching the footage that I do have it's actually fun to watch I'm like that looked like a really good time I just wasn't you were there in body just not in mind I was there in body and my brain was just like it was an inflated balloon I don't that just sucks I should have been sleeping in bed but the only problem is I didn't even have a bed or a hotel room I was pulling the homeless move and we were sleeping in a tent and the tent was hotter inside than it was outside so the way the sun was baking it. It was getting a greenhouse effect. Friday night was miserable. I'm just kind of aggravated and upset that I spent time off of work and money going to the place only to be the most miserable person on the, the parking lot. I didn't get any good runs in, and I was just disappointed with myself all <coughs> the time. And it's not the car's fault, you know? No, no. But it still did good. I mean, con considering, you know, that you weren't feeling good. Now... We can go through the tickets. My first run I made was my best run. I think that's where I was feeling the best. I just progressively got sicker as we were down there. Um, I waxed the Trans Am. I mean, I destroyed it, so that's all that counts. Yeah, really, that's that's all that matters is that we waxed the Trans Am. <laughs> and then Riley, he took the Trans Am up there probably at least a dozen times, and he was getting better and more consistent as time went on. Now, Chris is telling me people are blowing head gaskets on the track and there's steam everywhere, and I didn't even notice this, even though it's right in front of me. Yeah, you missed that. Blowing tires. So, our first ticket, we ran a 917 at 71 miles an hour against the Trans Am. The second one was against Mike from Den of Dreams with his Monte Carlo. I ran a 98 at 70 miles an hour. The third ticket's my dad, where he ran. <laughs> A whopping uh, 11.94 at 65 miles an hour. 
Ticket number four. This is the one where I did okay. I came in across at 81 miles an hour and I ran a 9.2. And then ticket number five is where I ran Chris. And that's where I came across at 65 miles an hour and I ran a 9.5. And I came across at 65 because I wound out second gear, missed third, and I didn't do anything other than just both pedals out and just coasted. Yeah. I didn't remember. I don't know, I was too busy paying attention to what was going on. I thought you were right next to me there for a little bit. I mean, you probably, and you were until you misshifted. Well, you got away from me and then I got next to you and then yeah. you just disappeared. Yeah. Even the announcer, you'll see in the video. <laughs> and the Chevelle takes him out of the hole. Oh, oh, oh here comes the cut. This is going to be a good one, folks. Oh, and the Chevelle takes it by about a car length. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> We might have been pretty even though, running across the stripe though. Yeah, it would have I think been pretty cool if we would have run across there pretty even. It was so disappointing. The moment it happened, I was like, well, that runs everything. Well, you could have gone up and run another run though. I don't. I didn't have it in me. You just that was it. You were done. No. I was pretty much done. Well, no, I ran. I went up and raced Riley then, and I just I went up and just blew him away, and then I was done. I didn't want to race anybody else. I didn't even want to go racing. Actually, you remember when you asked if I wanted to line up, and I said not really. Yeah. But we were both up there anyway. I was like, yeah, whatever, we could do it. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, it wasn't in me. Yeah. We still did all right. I wish I could have. Like I said, traction was an issue with with me, and I didn't want to do a whole lot of tuning or screwing with the car because I had 850 miles to drive home. So it was pretty much just drive it and see what it would do, and then that was it. Just let it be known. So, that I was sick with the flu, and I didn't back down from anybody. Did you empty your trunk out? No. Oh, you still no, the crap No, in your I didn't trunk. empty my trunk out either. My yeah. car is filled. <laughs> <laughs> you should open the trunk and shut them off. You think I should? Yeah. Yeah, so I didn't, I didn't even empty the trunk you out. You had ballast. It didn't matter to me. I was just like, I'm just going to run the car. I didn't do burnouts. I didn't warm the tires. I didn't empty my trunk. <laughs> you had ballast. I didn't take anything out of my trunk. <laughs> Down the track and there's crap all over the back seat and everything. Yeah, look at all the mess that you got in. <laughs> I didn't even empty the trunk out. I got the spare tire. I got tools under the tire that keeps them from going places. I got my roll around seat, <laughs> my dead fuel pump, a box full of tools, more parts. Uh, there's stuff under there that you can't really see under the light. Yeah, no. I didn't really take racing seriously other than <coughs> what we normally do on the street. We just kind of play around with each yeah. other when the light turns green. Yeah. And we never get up to excess speed on on the street because we're not stupid. No. And that's kind of what I did when I raced Riley. Man, I fuck, I blew him off the street and then I just stopped. <laughs> and then as I came across the finish line, I'm like, wow, that's right, I'm on a strip. I should have kept going, but I didn't. <laughs> You're waiting for the red light to turn. You gotta slow down. I did what I had to do and I let out of it. So I don't plow a parked car or somebody coming out from a side street. <laughs> It's, just, it's funny how your brain reacts when shit's encrypted into it. Yeah, because you're so used to doing that. <laughs> well, I proved my point. Time to shut down. Yeah. <laughs> oh no, we're on a strip. Whoops. <laughs> I can keep on going. And when somehow I still ran a better time. Yeah. Than any of my other times. That's crazy. I shut down before I got across the line. I wonder if you would have gone a little faster if you took all the crap out of the car. I didn't take my spare tire or anything out. Hell, I had jackets and crap between the seats and spare tire and whatever's jammed into that and hmm. yeah i didn't take anything out of it i was going to and then i was like the hell with it i'm not even gonna waste my time so i did take all my tools out though but usually when i run around in the street i don't have the tools in the car so i do so <laughs> usually i, I do <laughs> i know you do but what's in my trunk now is what's usually in my yeah, trunk so usually i just run with the spare tire whatever crap piled into that so okay i'm lying here just slightly i took this out of the trunk before I left my house. That's usually my trunk tool, but that's such miscellaneous stuff in that tub. Oh, yeah. Including like a gallon of water in case you drive through a puddle. You know, you can pull over at the gas station and wipe the dirt off your car, dry it off, and then wax it in. I, I took the auxiliary bucket out of my trunk. <coughs> yeah, I forgot about that. I was wondering if you emptied it out. I didn't even think about it. Yeah, I didn't take anything. I just took whatever I took down with me and I took that stuff out. Like so apparently neither one of us really filmed anything. Yeah, Mike oh. we, did. We, did, we didn't film. 
Now we gotta go like, like really? bums. So we gotta, we gotta, gotta go ask other going. people for their footage. Foster I'm left side, local here out of the uh, side side of Van Duzer, Missouri, right down the road. Mike Hammond with a large by huge 572 cubic inch Chrysler Hemi under the hood of that white dart. You know what Foster's got? He's got the extremely rare <laughs> LS motor under the hood. I didn't think there, was any, there were any of those left. I think there's only two or three. I yeah. talked with Dylan I told Chris it looks better that way. He has a car an attitude. Some turbos versus some nitrous. Like it has a what do you think? On an eight mile track, I'll take nitrous all day. 